Hey guys, Sebastian from Madrigal here. Welcome to the third part of the video series where we create a Vulkan backend for the Basis game engine. Today we're finally ready to start writing some actual Vulkan code. I know we've gone pretty long without actually writing any code, but we should be pretty well prepared now to get started. So, the first thing we'll want to do is have a look at the VEC API documentation. Um, and the initialization part. So, basically, uh, VEC makes initializing a Vulkan application a lot easier than using just raw uh, Vulkan. Creating a, just getting a, a Vulkan initialized, raw Vulkan application initialized takes quite a lot of time because you have to enumerate all kinds of things on the devices. Figuring out memory types and such. And VZ makes it easier, at least that's the idea. Right, so, um, I'm actually going to drag this off to the side a little bit so that I can read it on my secondary screen. I was thinking GFX backend VK, GFX API backend v, VK, this is probably the correct place to actually uh, initialize and de-initialize the whole Vulkan system. And so what we'll actually want here is um, a render device VK. So this is uh, of course this this class here which we'll start filling in soon. And we'll just call this M render render device. Oh. And then um, we'll want the actual VK instance. So VK instance is kind of like the whole, like a handle to the whole Vulkan system. Uh, to do anything with with Vulkan, you have to first create a a VK instance. Uh, some of this stuff is is uh, is taken here from from this part. So here you have the VK instance, for example. You call, call vez create instance, and some of this I actually remember from last time. So you have this vez create instance function. Uh, which looks like this, and, and you give it some some stuff. So the VEZ, VE, VEASY uh, library, which we're using, uh, the, the the functions start with VEZ. Official, or shall we say normal, regular Vulkan functions typically look like this. So VK create instance. And, and I think there's actually, there is actually like a, a method called exactly that if we go into... Uh, yeah, here we go. VK create instance. But we'll want the VEZ create instance this time. But we're still creating a VK instance, right? <clears throat> and then we'll want a VK physical device. And this is sort of like the analog to the DXGI adapter. It kind of like represents like an actual graphics card. Uh, in the in the system, right? Uh, yeah, maybe maybe that's actually what we want for now. And we'll just drag the CPP side here to the side, like this. And um, right. So what do we want to do? Well, we want to actually we want to actually initialize these guys to null, right? And the the Vulkan handles you typically want to initialize to VK null handle physical device VK null handle as well right and uh, here in init this is the correct place to start actually uh, initializing things so let's create a this application info app info uh, again, if you want, you can follow along with uh, 
VEC documentation on how, how to actually do this application name. Uh, I don't think this really matters, but let's just give it something. Uh, engine name. Mm, I don't know, that would be basis. Um, I mean, we want to do the application. Uh, nope, not that. Application version would be VK make version 100 or zero, one, yeah 100 I guess and uh, app info engine version I guess would be the same thing I don't really know if these are, are actually used for anything like this but, uh, but yeah VK API version so we're using we're using Vulkan 1.0 three here so that's good and now if we um, if we create the next one which is called instance create info right uh, oh create info we actually look at what goes into this guy well this has the application info that we created uh, as a general rule of thumb if you have uh, a Vulkan struct or a VEZ struct, they will always have this next pointer, which I'm not exactly sure what to do with, but it's typically set to null, so we can set it to null. We have the app info, which we filled in, and then we have these layers and extensions, right? What do we do with those? Uh, right, so... So, if we look here, uh, blah, 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 we can enumerate the physical devices, right? Right. And um, then we can get the physical device properties. Yeah. Okay. And we have. Um, Was it something about instance? Oh, here we have here we have a more complete thing. Let's put this up to the side again. So what I'm looking for is that we'll want to actually have the the validation layers and the validation layers are very handy in Vulkan because they will essentially tell you if, if you're doing something wrong. Well, we are certainly going to do something wrong. Definitely sure about that. Let's see. Do we have something like VK validation layer? Name? No. No. Don't remember exactly how how to do this, but I I, I do know that I want to have those validation layers uh, available to me right from the start, so that it it will tell me if I'm doing something stupid. Uh, right. I'm gonna I'm gonna read read some docs a bit figure this out one sec okay so what we have to do here <clears throat> is we have to enumerate enumer oh, come on enumerate all available instance layers right and uh, Vulkan typically uses uint32s we have layer count initialize to zero and we use a native Vulkan function to enumerate enumerate uh, instance layer properties instance layer properties and so what this does is that it when you give it null uh, this function actually lets you know how many layers you have available to you so now we can do vector uh, VK layer properties, layer properties, and we give it the number of 
layer properties we have. And again, we can do the same thing. But now we actually give it layer properties dot data, right? So first call to this just tells us how many we have. We reserve space for them and then we fill them in. And what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to I'm going to restart Visual Studio because PS 2019 sometimes behaves a little poorly when um, when switching between release and debug in large projects and it can cause some internal errors so I I'm, a ha I'm in a habit of actually restarting Visual Studio whenever I switch to configuration at the moment which is a little silly but anyway and we're gonna rebuild in debug mode so that we can we can actually run this in in debug uh, and make sure we have everything that we want right and then I'm gonna put in a new define here called define um, VK validation layer name and uh, I will have a look here what, what did that actually look like right so it's VK layer Kronos validation like this careful with the upper and lower uh, upper and lower uh, cases here so if we if we google that we, we get this this uh, uh, documentation page here which uh, just tells us that this layer uh, does a bunch of validation on all kinds of things essentially and lets you know if something goes wrong right so the Vulkan layers are like essentially a system to to enable and disable certain features and uh, third-party applications can insert their own layers and you can enable them and disable them and, and do all kinds of interesting interceptions but uh, but yeah, uh, I'm not super familiar with how they work, but uh, this is essentially how how um, how you're supposed to enable them. And uh, once this rebuild has finished, we can actually start stepping through this code in the debugger and see how it works. Uh, there's one more define I want to put in here. Just call VK debug utils extension name, which I have used in the past, and which is uh, quite handy. We'll get back to that in a bit, but I'll, I'll, I'll add it here once I have. I'm in the process of adding these defines. Again, we can we can Google this thing. Uh, And uh, this is uh, not a layer, but an extension. And uh, and uh, and uh, you get to essentially name your objects, so that if you're if you're doing something wrong and, and you have like a buffer that you're you're doing something wrong with, if you have set like a debug name for that buffer, then you get that name in your error reporting, which is just super handy. Let's you find find your errors much more easily. All right, so I think that should be it. Uh, I'm going to save that and uh, we should be almost almost ready with our compilation but in the meantime we can just do like bool um, what do we call this standard va validation found oh, not, not that and then for uh, 444 is it like 
VK K layer properties. I'm not actually know what kind of thing is this. Is this yeah, it's a struct, okay. So let's do a const ref and uh, we'll call that prop in the layer properties. And then if just use like a C style uh, string comparison here. So VK validation layer name. So if the name, whoa, 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 whoa. If the name of the layer that we found is this VK layer chronos validation, then we can set this to true and we can break. Right, so that means that we've found the, 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 um, the validation layer. All right, now if we run this, um, we won't actually uh, won't actually hit that, and uh, we're still running with D three D eleven, which is is the problem here, shall we say? So, what I could do is do something like this. Let's see if I can actually remember how this works now. So, if you do message, this is message box A. And that can probably be null pointer, right? Actually, it's I think it's supposed to be null like this. So text uh, select render. Actually, no. Let's let's do like a yes no. So let's let's do like use Vulcan question mark. And this can be select slide render. And then this is like misg box. Yes, no, no, how, how, how did that work? How did that work? Uh, let's, let's figure that out. Okay, so I looked up this, this thing a little bit. It should look like this. Right. Right. So, it's MB, not musical box. MB, yes, no. If yes, then we load our new uh, our new plugin, and if no, then we use the D3D11 plugin, and then we can, we can get rid of that line there. And that should be fine. Now, if we go and and look at build and release, we should see hey, here's our new our new DLL. It's 200k, so it's not very large. But it will grow. And now if we run this, we should get a nice message box. Use Vulkan. Let's start with selecting no, which should allow us to to use D3D11. Yes. And this is handy because I'm sure we'll have to... Ah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it did work. <laughs> I'm sure we'll have to uh, <clears throat> actually compare with the D3D11 one. Okay, so we have a breakpoint here. Let's select yes. And would you look at that? We actually uh, loaded and stepped into our new plugin. And we have, okay, we have 12 layers. So let's go and add that to the watch. And we can see what do we have? Well, we have all kinds of things. We have all kinds of things, and among those we have VK layer Chronos validation, which means that we should hit that. And yes, yay, we can enable the validation, which is exactly what I wanted. Good. Yeah, you can you can sometimes be a little tricky to to actually get Vulcan set up. Right, so. Then if we go to uh, the GLFW Vulcan guide, we brief briefly mentioned already the Vulcan supported thing. Oh, I wasn't supposed to actually click that. Um, but what we need to do is essentially this, like we need to query the required Vulcan extensions. And uh, it works like this essentially so after this we can just 
get the number of Vulcan extensions that GLFW uh, wants. So let's let's see if that works. If we get anything, yes, that's fine. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. And here we go. So we have two two extensions that it wants. It wants VK KHR. Uh, stands for Kronos surface and and some other thing as well. What's the other thing? Okay, Win32 surface. Yeah, well, okay, Th those they, they sound sound pretty uh, sensible, in my opinion. So I think um, if we if we go to this guy again, we have. Um, we have the uh, we have the layers and we have the uh, the extensions, right? And we have count for for both of them. So I think what we should do is I'll create a vector, uh, and they are just string pointers essentially. So we have instance extensions, right? And yeah, count that doesn't really tell us much. Let's call it instance extension count, right? And we'll use that there. Okay. And we'll do something like for size. Ti equals zero. I is smaller than instance extension count. And uh, and uh, and uh, yes. And then we'll um, we'll actually push to this, and we'll push this one right and we might actually want to push this one as well and we'll do it there outside the loop like so <clears throat> so all the extensions that glfw wants we'll add to the list but we'll also add this uh, this guy which we which we uh, listed ourselves. And I think uh, we might not always need that, but yeah, for now, let's just keep it as it is. So that was the instance extensions. Then we have the instance layers. So we'll do the same thing. We create a vector, we do const char instance layers and then uh, maybe we'll actually do let's do a, a boolean up here enable validation Co make it true for now just so we have something to to uh, easily toggle it on and off because the validation layers actually they eat up quite a lot of of performance if I remember correctly so if we want them on and we have a standard validation layers found or standard validation found then to the instance layers we push the uh, VK validation layer name so it's this guy here and to the instance extensions we uh, 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 uh. yeah that should actually probably be hmm what is this guy yeah maybe we don't hmm oh i'm getting my i'm getting my 
extensions and instances mixed up here. This is called VKEXT debug report extension name. Yes. Yes. Uh, right. So, <coughs> um, yeah, there's so many defines and so many strings here, but uh, but yeah, if we if we Google this, uh, if we Google this, where did I get this from? All right, yeah. So this is the this is the validation um, extension which allows you to get error feedback when you have the validation layers uh, enabled. So, um, so we'll definitely want that. Okay. Okay, so this should now be, this should be pretty good. And, uh, now we should actually have everything we want to to set up this this create info. So let's do something like this, and we do create info dot. Actually, let's just temporarily move this to this side, and we can see that we have okay. We have next again, which sets to null through this operator here. So we have p application info, and that would be um, address of app info. And then we have uh, enable layer count. So that's a uint thirty two, and instance layers. What's it called? Insta instance layers. size create info uh, pp layered right yeah so that's uh, pp enabled layer names that would be instance layers date and create info enabled extension count uh, and that would be instance extensions dot size And pp enabled extension names is then instance extensions dot data. Right. Well, that was a that was a lot of that was a lot of stuff. What is this complaining about? Expected a member name. Uh, yeah, it does work. I don't know. The intelligence is just sad. Okay. So now we can do something like vk result. I think. Yes, bigger result is V E Z easy create instance and um, and we give the address of the create info and we give the address of M instance. And this of course is this VK instance here that we created. Cool. And uh, yeah. If if we don't succeed, so if result is not VK success, then we can do um, what do we do? We do const char error message is the string utility temp format, uh, and we call it VEC failed and we just print the error right result like that um, I can do OS dialog this is obviously uh, like basis error handling at this point uh, exit one 
we're gonna want to check essentially all the results of everything, but uh, most of the time I'll, I'm gonna actually just have an assert check there. But if this fails, if this very first thing fails, then you'll probably just want to have a an actual dialogue showing you that okay, it didn't didn't start, it didn't work. Right. So maybe at this point we could actually try to to run this and see what happens. See what happens. Okay, so let's step through. Stepping through these these things here and stop there and let's see what do we have? So extensions. Surface Winter 2 surface debug report and utils. And then the uh, then the layers have just the one the validation layer. All right. So let's see what happens. And would you look at that? We have success. So this guy is now a valid Vulkan instance. Okay, pretty cool. And what I typically like to do is once I've created code to set something up. The next thing I do is create the, the corresponding shutdown code. So, uh, yeah, let's do VEZ uh, destroy instance, right? M instance this and then we set it back to bk null handle okay nice um, okay so this was a lot of stuff just to get Vulcan up and running in, in any kind of capacity uh, maybe we'll we'll still want to do one thing uh, and this is this is again things that that you can you can Google here if you want to like VK EXT debug report. We'll want to have have the validation set up so that we can move on to more interesting things next. So I'm just gonna have a look here at at the code. How do we do this? So if we have uh, enabled the validation layers, we'll want to have something called and this is a real monster of a name so it's called vk debug report callback create info ext exactly thank you create uh, create info and that's called create info as well let's call this like debug create info and uh, Create info s type. This is oh sorry, debug create info dot s type. This is something you typically have to do with with uh, native Vulkan types. Is that you have to give it this type. So this is called structure rock sure type debug report callback create info. Oh, Jesus, these names. Welcome to native uh, Vulcan. Welcome to the world of native Vulcan. Debug report error bit and warning bit. Yeah, so we probably want both of them. Uh, debug report warning bit. So if we have this bit set it will report er errors as, as actual errors and warnings as well, which is probably what we want. And then we want to create a function somewhere which actually gets called. I have this namespace here. Let's put it there. So debug callback. And what is that supposed to actually... What's that supposed to look like? Can I copy paste it from somewhere? It's like a real, real handful to actually write out. 
Oh, well, seems like I can't really. Okay, so it's VKAPI. VK bool 32. VK uh, API call. Not sure how many of these are actually needed. Let's call it debug callback. VK debug report flag flags ext. That's flags. Uh, maybe I'll do something like this. And then VK oh, debug report. I don't know, command report object and give me the type, thank you. So that's object type, okay. And then unit 64 object, that's probably some kind of handle. We have size T location. Okay, okay. Int 32 code. Const char. So now we have layer prefix. And finally, we have the actual message. And we have a user data. All right. So this is the callback that's going to actually. Uh, get called by Vulkan if uh, if we have an error or a warning. So let's just do if we have flags. Oop, not that. We or it with VK debug report error. So if it's an error, we'll do something. Uh, what? One too many there, like so. If it's an error, we do something. If it's a warning, we do something else, All right? And in the future, maybe we'll actually do something different. But for now, let's just do assert. And we just set this to false so that the assert actually fails. And then we'll do uh, Vulcan error and message and for the warning we just do warning Vulcan warning like so and I think that's probably enough then we need to return something right so we just return VK false All right. I hope this I hope this makes sense. This is sort of a sort of a mouthful to or handful or or something full to actually set these up, but they are really worth it in the end. So create debug report callback ext and we give it the instance that we have and we give it the debug create info uh, allocator is null we don't use any custom allocators and uh, oh we need some object to store it in vk debug report callbacks ext vk debug report callbacks e ext here we go what do we call that? M debug report callback. I think this is just a way for it to like hold on to to uh, to the registration of this somehow. So let's init that to null, right? And then let me give it the address of that. And the thing we forgot to set here is the actual callback. So that's a pointer to a function and we did call it debug callback I think like so 
like if we go and look at this it's it's this function that we we put up here okay right and now we probably still need to to tear this down if we have it uh, actually set up oh we need to check here so let's do like basis error unless uh, unless result is ek success fail to set up Vulkan error or on the debug callback something like that just to make sure that we we notice if it doesn't actually succeed and here if we have it m debug is not vk null handle then then we do destroy debug report callback debug report and please give it to me it's, it's, not really, it's not that is it yeah it's probably, it probably is uh, so it's instance and then that's the uh, that's the callback and allocator is null and we set this back to vk oh vk null handle okay and let's see let's see how this works uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh -huh, what 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 Unresolved. Oh. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. I've I've I've, I've seen this kind of thing before, and usually what this means is that you have to dynamically get a function pointer to to these functions, unfortunately. Um, okay, I'll I'll get, <laughs> I'll be back in a sec. All right, yeah, I I it was exactly how I imagined it. So you can't actually call some of these instance uh, functions directly in Vulkan. Uh, instead, you have to you have to get the a, a pointer to them, kind of how you you did b things back in in the OpenGL days. Uh, so what I did was I created this small wrapper function, which essentially takes the the same uh, same um, parameters as the actual function, but then you have to you have to use VK get instance proc address procedure address. And give it the name, and you get a function pointer, which you can then call. And same thing for the destroy. And um, and then we just call call that here instead, and 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 destroy there instead. Okay. So let's run this now. And uh, with some luck, yes, we want to use Vulkan. We should. Uh, have our Vulcan environment pretty much completely set up. So create info that looks that looks good. App info looks good as well. So that succeeded. That's good. We get the callback set up and yay, it succeeds. Awesome. Now, if we if we continue running, well, sooner or later we're we're going to crash, and looks like we're crashing here in render init internal, because yeah, the render device is, is null. So that's that's the next thing we're going to do. But uh, we'll leave that until next time. Now we have our Vulkan environment essentially up and running, and this this was a lot of code indeed. Uh, but it is uh, it's very important stuff so 
So it's good that we have it working now. Cool. Uh, I will see you in the next one. Bye.